We are recording, so the class is officially going. Okay, Laura, are you on the line? Hello, Laura Turn. Okay, well, hopefully she'll join us as soon as she gets her coffee. She was gonna to talk to you guys about Engineers Without Borders. Uh, it's something that she's involved in and it, it looks like a really good endeavor. So I will make sure that she has time uh, to address you guys on that and tell you all the wonderful things about it. In the meantime, however, I am going to share my screen. So we are on lesson seven today. As always, this will be due on Monday at 8 a.m. so that there's no confusion. And this, your, oh, go sorry. ahead, shoot. One of your graders tried emailing me the next morning after I turned something in on Saturday. She emailed me trying to say that I turned it in late and almost gave me a zero for it and then went, oh, uh, sorry, I read, the, I read the calendar wrong apparently. Yeah, the same thing happened to me. Yeah, guys, if you run into any of that, I mean, they are swamped in work and they are human. You know, they may screw up. So just email me, tell me what's going on. If it's legit, I'll just fix it. Uh, don't worry about that. Okay, so lesson seven, making solid models from real parts. This is one of my favorite lectures, actually because it's the most real. It's not some contrived thing that I'm having you guys draw for a specific lesson. So today we're gonna to go over the super basics of how to use this thing. This is called a pair of calipers. And these are used for measuring. So for example, if I wanna measure across the flats of this nut, I can put it in the jaws. I use the little friction thumb wheel right over here to push it up tight. And the way you read this thing is you read the full inches and the first decimal place off the ruler right here. Okay, so if I was gonna read this, I would say, oh, I see one full inch. I'm f completely past the two, but I'm not quite to the three. So I know the measurement is gonna be 1.2 something. And that something comes off the dial over here. These are gonna be your second and third decimal places. So in this case, I would read it as 1.29, eh, it looks about like a one there. So the measurement is 1.291. So that's the first way you can use it when you're just going across flats. The next way you can use it is, <coughs> excuse me, if you have an internal bore that you're trying to measure. So for example, I have this ball bearing here and I use the upper jaws which you can see right here. These are for measuring internal diameters. So I use the thumb wheel again. I slide the jaws open as far as it will go. And then I read the scale and then get the last two decimal places off the, uh, the dial. And lastly, you can use it for depth. So if I wanna measure what the depth of this bearing is, this is not the greatest way to do it, but you know, it'll give you the idea. What you do is you put the calipers straight up, you put the shoulder on the object to measure, and then you extend the little stainless steel rod to the depth of the bore that you're trying to measure. And then it's the same as always. You get your full inches and your first decimal place off the ruler part. You get your last two decimal places off the dial part. 
So that's how calipers work. This is the point in the class where I normally uh, hand out a set of calipers to everyone. I have a box of goodies. And I say, here, pick three objects and draw them. All right, so this is the world of COVID, unfortunately. So we can't do that. However, what I do think is reasonable is I want you guys to take three objects from your room. You can probably find a soda can easy enough. I can't imagine a student that doesn't have a soda can laying around. So in this class, I want you to try drawing three objects. If you have any trouble, then you know, feel free to take the screen, show me what you got. I realize that a ruler is not as good, uh, but you know, we'll just work with it. So let's see, there's that. That's pretty much all I have. The class runs quite well when we actually have a normal year. Um, does anybody have any questions about the exam before I just cut you loose and say, draw three parts? So we do have an exam tomorrow. Uh, the format is three questions. It's just like the homework. You're gonna get three blueprints. You're gonna have to draw the three objects, use all the rules I've shown you. Uh, if I see anybody cut extrude circles to make a hole, I will take off 15 points every time you do that. If I see the thread feature, if I can actually see spirally threads, I will take off 15 points every time you do that. Okay, so don't do it. Please do not do it. I have and, a question. Yep, shoot, Gage. So how are we gonna take angles if something is slightly angled? So I assume I, took, I went and measured this cup. Okay. This cup angles, angles outwards. So there's two ways you can do that. That's, that's a really good example. So if you measure the diameter at the bottom, the diameter at the top, and do a little trig, you could get the angle that way. All right, so just I could work from two profile, okay. Yeah. So you would take let me see, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So you can measure the distance. You could get the, let me see. Yeah, you could get the amount that it angles in, in distance, divided by the height, and then take the arc tangent of that, and you'd have it. All right. And just remember to convert out of radians. Uh, I had a quick question before the test. Yeah, shoot, Sam. Go ahead. Um, so it's about the whole wizard feature on a like cylindrical object. Yep. Is there a way instead of like making a tangent plane and then going all the way through? Is there a way to start at like the middle plane and then whole wizard in both directions? I don't think so. I have never tried that. I mean, I always just put a plane in. Yeah. Drop the drop the whole wizard on the plane and go. Okay. Um, I have to try it and see. It's, it's not a bad idea. I have seen people put whole wizard on cylindrical faces and then try to constrain it with a 3D sketch. And that always ends badly. So I would encourage you guys not to do that. Um, Yeah, all, all of the holes you're gonna do on the exam, they're pretty vanilla. So, and when you get to the exam, if you find that you've got just absolutely like 50 sketches going on and you're absolutely going nuts, you're doing something wrong. I don't think any of the exam problems had more than about eight steps when I drew them. Okay, so even if you do something different, you take a harder route, if you've got more than 10 or 12 steps, you know, step back and think about what you're doing. Uh, I did make a video out there. 
So do you guys all know that how to fail MEE 120 in five easy steps is a thing on YouTube? And I go over all the things that I do not want you to do. Uh, so I'm looking at my ruler here. Yep. <laughs> the rest of it has the typical 16th down to 16th, but then for the first inch, I can't tell like if that's, is that, is that supposed to be one of 30 seconds? It looks more like a, cause it looks more like a down here. Yeah, it does. I'm really confused by that. I have never seen that. That looks really difficult. Um, but again, what I'm looking for in this is your drawing skills. I don't really care if you're off by a 32nd of an inch. All right. So just go ahead and take your best guess with it. And let's see. Yeah, those are 30 seconds. Okay. I can only tell because on the bottom where there's the, where the centimeters or the uh, millimeters are, the all the lines are the same length, but on that one, all the lines are different. Okay. So they're all different lengths, so you can tell it's smaller. So let's see. Then, then again, what I, what I was trying to measure was a sixteenth in width. Okay, so in the chat window, I put the link to the video on everything not to do in MEE 120. Everything that I'm gonna absolutely just go bonkers and nail you for on the test. So the big ones for me, no thread feature, okay? Always cosmetic threads, whether it's male or female. No external sketches. Everything driving an extrude or a boss or a sweep or whatever, everything driving that should be under the feature so that the reader's not looking at trying to find the source of data for the object across multiple sketches. There's never a need for that. So let's take our best estimates on material or no. Yeah, take your best guess. So like that, cup you've got, I would probably guess that's PET, polyethylene terthalate, and it's probably yeah. under the plastics, it's just PET. Yeah, it probably is. I mean, it's the cheap cup that the, the school gave me. <laughs> it's one of the ones from the freaking dining hall that they handed out to everyone. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of those kinds of tchotchkes, but I'm also old. I just like durable stuff. And let's see, while I'm here, there was some questions on the soda can. So let me give you my caliberized dimensions on the soda can. And for the final project, I'm gonna have to give you guys some dimensions. Normally I leave a set of parts out and everybody just piles into Crosby. Um, but again, we can't do that this year. So you will get things like a CD mounting hub. I have the 3D print club, we'll create those for you. Makes your life so much easier. 
So what I couldn't understand is why aren't we just like having like smaller groups of people come in for it? Well, there's, there's two reasons. One is I had to fill out uh, a COVID occupancy plan for the building. And like in the fishbowl, I can only put four people. I can put a few more in room 102. But the other thing is honestly, I've got an 87 year old at home that's immune compromised. So if I bring home COVID, I'm probably gonna kill him. And when you kill your wife's father, that does not go over well. So it's, it's not a great answer, but it's the reality of it. I don't want to sleep out in the barn for the rest of my marriage. Have we learned how to do multiple materials on a single part yet? No, and you never will. All right. Thanks. So let's say you did. Let's say you had, I don't know, a pencil. Okay, you would have a rubber eraser, you probably have a brass band that holds the eraser on, you have the wooden shaft of the pencil, and then the graphite interior. There's a couple ways to look at that. If there's, if you are a pencil manufacturer, then you need to detail out, <coughs> excuse me, every single part on that. So you'd have to have a print for the eraser, for the brass band, for the wood, and for the graphite, so that you have them all fully defined. Okay. If you're Amazon and you're just buying it, then you would just create a single body solid model and put all of that stuff in it. You know, kind of like the way, uh, like General Motors, if they need a solid model for an alternator, GM doesn't really care about what's inside the alternator. They don't care about how it's wound, how it's laminated or anything else like that. All they care is what's the size and shape of it and does it fit within my machine? So there's a difference between manufacturers, part, prints, and then um, a purchased part print for an object you're just going to use and provide space for. And that's why in this class, I'm going to tell you never, ever, ever have multiple materials in a part. I mean, maybe if, if it had nothing to do with business or industry and you just needed it for, uh, you know, analysis in some class. Okay, in that regard, sure, go for it. You could do multiple bodies and assign, you know, the properties of rubber, the properties of wood, the properties of graphite. But outside of academia, no. I have two questions. <clears throat> Shoot, go for it. So I have a sketch. Uh, can I can I use it for two uh, for two twice? I mean, can I use it, this sketch for extrude something, and then use the same sketch again for uh, for a sweep? Does it make sense? First yeah. Um, Can I copy it and, you know, copy the geometry and yeah, link? So if I have to <coughs> get the first sketch, it will change the second one? Yeah, you could do it. Uh, I'm just filling out the chat. It, it would probably not be my preferred way to do it, uh, but you certainly can. And I'll show you an example in just a second. I'm just trying, I, I want to um, 
model the, the chain bar. Uh, and I'm going to, it has some curves, weird curves here, but I'm going to make the, the, the cut between the metal, uh, where the, the bar uh, drives. This is on your firewood processor, Emmanuel? Yeah, yeah. Do I have my video? Oh, I have my video. So that's the same. I don't know. Can you see my video? Uh, let me just hit send on this. <clears throat> okay, so I just measured a full Coke can, guys, and I put the dimensions in the chat window. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. Okay, Emmanuel, you got the screen if you want it. Okay, so that's the chain bar. Okay, it's, it, I, it, the, I don't know, I'm not gonna get the exact dimensions on the bar, but I'm gonna model this, the cut, where the, the chain actually goes. So I'm thinking, make a sketch flat, extrude it, and then use the same sketch or you know, just an offset to make the this uh, hole. This, how do you say that? Uh, that? That slot between the two sides of the bar? Yeah. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad. So if I was going to do that one, and, you know, there's multiple ways to do that. Or maybe I can just make three three sketches, three extrudes, the two outer plates and then inside, that could also. Work. I think I would do it as two sketches personally. So I would do the profile without the cut. Yeah. And then I would do a sketch to do the cut. Just, okay, a different sketch? Yes. Okay, okay. I can do that, that way. Okay. Um, so let's... On the Coke, do you need the cap or just the... Okay, so this gets into how much detail should you put on a part? Okay, if it's something you're gonna buy, then you've gotta have enough detail that a purchasing person in another department can identify what it is and you need enough detail in the model that guys on the assembly floor can see where the bolts are and you need enough detail so that incoming inspection can check it and say oh yeah this is a conforming part or this is not a conforming part so i will show you mine show me that sir sir um, can, like, can you do fillets that are smaller than 0.1 inches? Because I can't. A absolutely. Can. Yeah. You can. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you can go down to like 10 to the minus 23rd or some crazy yeah. small number. <laughs> All right. Okay. Ah, I saw a folder with Carby. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing in there that you're interested in. <laughs> yeah, fun stuff. Okay, so here's my Here's my, uh, my Coke can engine. Yeah, 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 be quiet. There's the modified can. Yes, be quiet.
So this is what I started off with for my Coke can. And it's not super detailed. I left the tab off. You guys are welcome to leave the tab off as well. Um, but I think that any person in another department could look at this and say, oh, I know what that is. So I do have the domed indent on the bottom. I've got this contouring that's on the can. I've got the rolled crimped lip up on the top. And <coughs> as always, I made it really, really simple. So I just started off with a cylinder and then I cut the basic geometry off the top, filleted it to kind of smooth it out a little bit. That cut extrude, put the recess in. I put the mouth opening in, did some more fillet smoothing. And I followed the same process on the bottom. Wait, so for that recess, did you cut extrude a circle? No, it's an ellipse. Oh, there before is before no. that, like right, it, it cut extrude four. What was that one? You didn't see that. <laughs> you never saw that. Looks like a cut extrude. Yeah, you didn't see that. You should say that after the uploading of the recording. So then just more fillets. And what I did is, I know some people last year got all kinds of crazy and they did the offset curve thing to hollow out their can. The reason that I put this cut was to create a face down there to create the, the piercing face for my shell operation. And then the very last thing was shelling it and I got a hollow can out of it. So this is what I would consider as kind of like, eh, standard for the model I expect of a soda can. And you guys can decide if you want to put the decal on it or not. We'll go over how to do that in a couple of weeks. So it's absolutely not manufacturing quality, but it absolutely is purchasing quality. Can you just quickly, um, just super quickly go over how you did the dome bottom? Yeah. So I did a cut revolve for that. And all I did was a sketch and it looks like that. So in my mind, that kind of looks like a lathe tool going around and cutting the material away. Got it, thanks. And what we're gonna do with these tin cans, if you've read ahead in the assignment, we're gonna treat this just like the castings I used to get at Pratt & Whitney. So we're gonna bring the can in as like a rough casting. Then at the assembly level, we're gonna put in all of the openings and the changes. So at the assembly level, we'll put in this cut window, we'll open up the top of the can and then that will actually be brought into the top level of this, this engine.
So that way you guys will have a way to keep track of a part number as it goes through the manufacturing process, going from rough casting to finished part and then inst into the installation. If you do it this way, then everything gets purchased and you don't have to worry about something getting left behind. You guys have any questions on the exam tomorrow? I think the email was pretty self-explanatory, but anything you guys want me to go over while we have time? All right, then everybody's gonna get 100 tomorrow. Are we gonna to have to measure anything for the exam? No. So what I will do is I will, I'll email out the three blueprints at the start of the class. And then you should have everything you need right there on the blueprint, just like the homework. You're gonna work along, you know, you'll probably finish up a half hour early, I hope. You'll turn everything into MEE 120. And what I usually do is I open up the MEE 120 inbox, when you guys hit submit, as soon as you see it on my screen and show up in the inbox, then you know, yes, in fact, I do have it and you're all good. So a uh, quick question. Yep. This cup here has an offset, There's a slight offset between here and here. I probably needed to draw that in, didn't I? But the thing is, I can't get that measurement. That's so minuscule. Yeah, with a ruler. So minuscule, can't... I can't even. <laughs> well, I mean, take your best guess. I mean, if I were to take a guess on what I would put there, I would make that lip like 0 0.015 inches high. Put that in your model and see what it looks like. If it looks right, just run with it. And I don't know how I'm going to get these uh, pattern things inside here. I was like, you see like those little three bumps that are in there? Yeah, don't Probably. even wor don't worry about those. Especially that's a because like after shelling it, I had to then go back into there. Yeah, no, don't worry about those bumps because what those probably are are when that was injection molded. That's probably where the plastic was pushed into the mold. I could get them in there though. You but could. I don't think those are meant to be there. No. If I was going to make a print for a part like that, I would just make a geometric allowance for flatness on the bottom. And if you make it, say, like 0 0.02 inches of waviness or flatness, then the bumps can be there and the person will accept it and it's all good. What I'm realizing on this cup is that the lip on the bottom only exists so that the words don't scrape on the table. Yeah. And you could put the words in, but I'm not looking for that kind of detail. It's a lot of work. <laughs> so there was, I think it was two years ago when I did this, I passed out some expended 308 uh, brass shell casings and I had a student actually put 7.62 millimeter in an arc, cut extruded into the bottom of the shell casing. They put 7.62 on a three. Yeah. They actually got all of the manufacturer's markings and all of it. I was like, damn. Did you tell them they're trying too hard? Uh, I had some snarky remark, something like that. I've done that stuff a couple of times, but what I find is like if I put a word in a part, so maybe I want a plasma cut U main into a sheet metal part, 
I always find it gets, it makes the edges jaggy when I export it. I'm trying to figure out. It's, this needs to be four. And the offset one needs to be. This is a point oh one five offset. Yeah, try that and see what it looks like. That's a okay. Oh, one five. Oh, there we go. Yeah. The issue is that that's not angling the wrong way. So, can you pr put in a parallel relation? Oh yeah, true. I could probably do that. The issue is that that's probably going to stretch my radius then, or it's going to push something else in. Well, I mean, once you're all parametrically driven, that's just a change of number. Mm. That's not the correct direction. Um, I have a question. So for um, say like things that aren't necessarily holes, they're more just like, um, you know, like the Coke can example, or maybe like a, the little clicker on your uh, iPhone or something yep. like that. Um, would cut and extrude be okay for something like that? That's not actually like a, a bolt hole. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. And really, I just get nuts over, you know, holes that are going to be machined in. So, and that's why I did the cut extrude on my soda can. That's never actually going to be machined. You're not going to tell a machinist to do that. So, yeah. I do have a quick question. Yeah, Chase. Um, I'm trying to do uh, um, just a model of the exterior of my uh, AirPods case. And I was just wondering because it does, it's, it's like a solid 3D object that has just a slice through it for the, the part that flips open. Okay. Is there any way to sort of just do that? Take the screen and show me what you're looking at. Um, working on a separate laptop, but I will, oh uh, shoot. Um, uh, best way to do it. <coughs> yeah, if I just join on my other laptop and then I'll ask the, I'll finish asking the question, I'll be able to screen share from there. Yeah, whatever works for you, that's fine. All right. <clears throat> Laura, are you on the line? Laura, turn. Okay, still getting coffee, I guess. Turns out Laura doesn't actually exist. I got to tell you, my roster has been weirder this year than any previous year. I had people adding the class uh, much, much later than usual. And then I've had about five people drop the class. So uh, I set it parallel. Okay. And the issue is that after setting it parallel, it pushed, it pulled it in. So now it's inside. So now I have, oh, uh, here, I'll share my screen actually. Go for it. So now I have an inward facing groove here. 
zoom out a little bit. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. Cup. Okay. And this is going inward facing. Okay. So then what I would do is delete the 15 dimension and then just drag the line out. Oh, it's parallel. I got to remember the parallel relation. And delete the one point, the one point three at the top. That's keeping it from dragging as well. But that's the diameter of the. Yeah, I know. As well, it's not the diameter; it's the radius of the cup. Yeah, that's okay. For right now, let's just get the uh, lip on the right side. Now I gotta get the right angle. So now I can make a parallel actually, now that I think about it. Yep. There we go, now it's parallel. Very nice. So I'll make this 15. Five, four, five. The only thing that should be defined is this top one. And I got a cup. Well, it's already black, so it's defined. No, it's underdefined, though. In the bottom right, it's underdefined. Yeah, the sketches, but that. That line segment is not. So do you see any blue lines? Yeah, here. Okay, so that's where your under definition is coming from. So you got the overall height, and then you got those two heights. That's weird. I would expect it to just want a radius on the top line and then, yeah, you'd, be, it's then being, you'd be all good. It's being real weird. I'm assuming the radius is on top is what it's waiting for. Yeah. That's not it. <laughs> One point three three. That's not correct either. It should be one point five. There we go. Looks about right. Nice. Feature fill it failed to rebuild. Yeah. And that's part of the reason that I always do fillets is the very last thing. There's this. Yeah, I'll just remove them all. Stop and repair. I don't yeah. want yeah, no. I just want to delete them. Right. Okay, there we go. I can't even get this one. Okay, so that one, grab the blue line and drag it down below fillet three. You're in a rolled back state. It's kind of like suppression. So go, so to your, do I? go to your part manager, go down to the blue line, left click and drag, there you go. And that turned fillet three back on so you could delete it. There we go, that was weird, okay. And I'm just estimating that it's 0 0.05 on the uh, billets. That's fine. I, That's I really, the best you can do. Uh, I had a quick question. Yeah, Ethan, go ahead. Uh, is it okay if we use the lofted boss face um, feature? Because... I haven't uh, gone over it, but if you know how to use it, that's fine. 
Okay, thank you. What do you do? Are you doing, doing, like, to are you doing like a d destroyer hull or something? Oh. I'm trying a lava lamp, and it's just like from a circle. It's like a diameter circle to another diameter circle, so just easy to use that command. Okay. I have a fun thing I'm going to try to make. So this cup, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna get one of my discs from my car, one of my disc golf discs. We're gonna make one of those. It's gonna be a fun time. So you're gonna do a, a brake rotor? Oh yeah, totally. Okay, <laughs> that's a that's a good part to do with all those funny little cooling ribs and all that other stuff. Sure. Oh you oh you misheard me. I thought you were making a joke for a second. Okay. <laughs> I said I was going to get one of my disc golf discs, and then you, you somehow interpreted brake rotor. Oh, yeah. I, I'm not I going to grab thinking... a brake disc. <laughs> See, if you saw my barn, you'd understand why I jumped to that thought. You just, like, keep all your brake discs that you take off your cars? Well, no. I... So you can get some good money for those. Every year I have one giant scrap iron clean out, and all the old Jeep bodies that have been replaced and the brake rotors and everything, it just all goes to recycling. I live in a small town and we got a bunch of older people that, you know, don't make a whole lot of money. So I just, I call them up and I say, Fred, come on over. I got scrap metal to get rid of. <laughs> and they go in and they make a hundred bucks or 200 bucks. I just put cleaning gas out your barn. Exactly. I have a question. Are we going to add material? Yes, go ahead and add it as best you know it. Oh, okay. So if plastic, are we just going to guess which one it is or? That's all you can do, specific? yes. Okay. So if it's a stiff plastic, you know, some of the higher use ones are like polystyrenes. That would be for like a remote control for a TV, something like that. PBT general purpose is what you said I should use? For you, yeah, PET. PET or PBT? PET. PET. There it is. Yeah. Boom. Nice. Pretty. Is there a way to do <laughs> clear? Yeah, absolutely. So, yep, go for the beach ball and then right click. Yep, edit appearance. Clear plastic. There you go. Translucent, frosted. Let's say translucent. There we go. Nice. Boom. So the only other thing is you probably have an internal radius down in the bottom of the cup. Well, uh, I shelled it. Yeah, so you could put another fillet in there at the bottom inside. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, let me just reach into the cup and feel for it. <laughs> well, you, you should be able to math that one out because you'll have whatever radius of curvature minus the wall thickness of the cup. Yeah, so I could probably reopen the sketch and then put a fillet on the inside. Absolutely. Or you could put a fillet feature after the fact. So whatever works for you. Wait. I can't even see inside the cup to even look at that. You can't rotate around so that you got a view at like. Okay, uh, I got the I got the face actually. Is there a way to do like an internal fill an internal fill internal fillet feature? Like, is there a way to like? Yeah, it should decide on its own. base. Okay. Here, one sec. Fillet feature. Base, smooth edges cannot be filtered or fill it. I mean, 
So that's probably because you already have a fillet on the top edge. So it would want to lay a fillet on top of a fillet and they would conflict with each other. Oh, are you talking about the top? You're talking about the bottom. So I'm talking about, I'd like to see a fillet at the bottom because you do have a radius there. <clears throat> Excuse me. But if you try to fill it the inner face of the cup, it will try to lay a fillet on top of a fillet because I believe your top edge is already filleted inside. My top edge on the outside is filleted. Yeah, but... The inside, I don't know if it's filleted or not because I did the outside edge. The outside edge is filleted. Okay. But the inside edge, I don't think I did anything beyond shelling it. Okay. And when I shelled it, there was no fillets. So on the top, if you put a fillet in that's half the material thickness at the top, then you could go fill at the face on the interior and do half a material thickness there. You'd probably be fine. Could you show us your Coke can again, specifically how you did the bottom? Sure. Okay, so here's my can again. And the way I did it, I did a cut revolve and sketch seven. Looks like this. And yes, it should be fully defined. You have a lot of definitions of, of dimensions of zero. Yeah, I mean, that's how I say, put it right on the face. Uh, I had a quick question about the Coke can as well. Sure, go for it. Uh, so I'm pretty much done. I just have to shell it out. Um, can I share my screen actually? I just, I'm trying to shell it out with the ellipse, um, like just punch through that, but it's not letting me select it. Um, okay, go ahead, show me. All right, so that's what I have so far. Okay, looking good. Um, this ellipse up here, it's fully defined and everything, so. Nice. Should be good, but. Um, and I select it and then. So now try doing an extrude cut. And I would go down one metal thickness. So like 0 0.005. There you go. Oh, oh, and then select this plane here. Yeah, shell that face. Oh, okay. Do you know what the thickness of the aluminum on the inside is? Uh, it's like 0 0.005 to 0 0.003. Soda can is roughly the same thickness as a sheet of paper. Okay, perfect. And the last thing was, I, I don't know if you can see, but I put a, like I tried to cut revolve the bottom there. Yeah. I can't tell if it's there. I think it is like when I do the hidden lines, like that little arc. Yeah, so if you only drew half of it. I drew half and then cut revolved it. Yeah. So the only problem I have with that just theoretically is on a Coke can, there's actually a rounded edge that the thing can sit on. Yours is gonna be sharp right. the way you have it drawn. So, you know, just put in a little horizontal line to 
just like right there or something. Yeah, or in the edge of that that arc further toward the center line. Got you. Okay. Yeah, because it comes to like an infinite thinness right there, right? Exactly. The way I have it right now. Okay. Yeah. Other okay. than that, it, it looks pretty nice. Now, you will want to put your fillets in before you do the uh, do the shelling operation. So in order to do that and not lose any work, there you go. Just so just fill it. it like here and around these little edges and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Thanks. All good. Um, I do have a question because I have this on my other laptop now. Um, okay, Chase. about cutting straight through the three D object, um, just because it's it's when you look at it. Um, I'll just screen share. Um, So when you're looking at it right across, right, right across, right about there, it's all the way around. It's cut through. It's two separate pieces, and in the back there's a hinge. And I'm just trying to figure out how to get sort of like a cut line to be visible um, on this, if that's even possible. Anything's possible. It's just that some things are really, really hard. Okay. So can you put your camera on and show me the object that you're trying to do? All right, yeah. Uh, so essentially the AirPods open up like this, but the, there's a line and there's, there's a little indent for where your finger goes, but all the way around is cut. Now I was just, I don't know if that's, feature is just too difficult to put in or? Until you go to two parts, yeah, that's pretty hard. Um, I mean, chances are the way they engineered it, they probably did do two parts. That's yeah. why the hinge is there. It's two yeah, it pieces. makes sense. I was just hoping to see if I can get around that. So what you could do is you could put, <coughs> excuse me, if you just wanted to have a model picture, you could do an intersection curve. So you'd end up putting a plane in, put an intersection curve in, which I haven't gone over, uh, but you just have to Google it. They're not hard to do. And then you'd have to draw like some small cutting rectangle and sweep it around the part to put in that little little detail. If it makes sense to just sort of do that, like not do that, or is it just too much effort to go through? It's... I mean, honestly, I would just choose a different part. Yeah. All right. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of work in that. Yeah, it was just trying to see if I could do something with it, but I'll find something else. Yeah, a noble ambition. And, you know, my hat goes off to you if you really want to do it, and pull it off. But it would be hard. All right. All right, guys, so we're at 9.02. I'm going to end the recording here. And do you want me to stay on the line for a while, or do you have other classes you need to bug out to? I got to get going. Okay.